Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and I think for the first time ever, welcome to a rolling stock review. <laughs> So very recently, in fact only last week, Hatton's released a brand new range of rolling stock and in fact they're not like coaches or wagons or really anything that I've ever looked at before. Uh, they are in fact snow plows which is completely unusual to me. I've never owned a model snow plow, at least not in double O gauge and uh, this is going to hopefully be really really interesting. Now based on the high quality of Hatton stuff I decided I would pick up two of these. Uh, as you can see mine are in the yellow and there's a couple of different variations available as I've already said. Uh, if you're at all interested in these click the link in the description it's at the top uh, you can browse and see the whole different range of uh, bill hack snow plows that happens have just released as i say my two bill hacks are yellow and one of them is the stratford shark and if you've not heard of the stratford shark version i will talk about that a little bit later on but for now then let's investigate these let's take a look uh, for the first time ever a rolling stop review okay let's take a look so uh, here they are then, my pair of Hatton's Beal Hacks, and if like me, uh, when you first heard about these, you didn't know too much about them, then don't worry, uh, hang around, I'm going to give you a little bit of background in just a moment. But for now, let's get these out and take a look at them. So as you can see, they're in the uh, sort of standard Hatton's packaging, which I assume they use for most of their rolling stock. As you can see, it's very, very glossy. I really do like the gloss on that, very cool. Uh, there's not too much to see on the packaging or anything, no info on the back of the box or anything like that, but the end of the packaging does show you uh, a little bit of information it's on the other side this time so as you can see this particular bill hack is the h4 bh003 and this is the bill hack snowplow x class 40 we'll talk more about what that means in just a second zza and then the whole bunch of numbers in br yellow so yep yeah, that's what this one is and without any further ado then let's get this out and uh, take a look so if i just grab the uh block of ice out if you want to call it a block of ice yeah I guess it's still a block of ice so noticeably no paperwork or detail packs or anything like that which uh, is good because it means it's going to be simple and of course it means that everything's already fitted to the model as far as detail goes so let me lift this off as you can see it's a bit unconventional as far as the block of ice uh, packaging uh, goes but it does make sense and it does work it holds the model in very very nicely so once you've got the top off there then you're free to uh, peel back the plastic cover and uh, take a look at the model inside and I'm going to very carefully grab this. Ah, and just under here, it seems that there is a detail pack, so it looks like I was wrong about saying there wasn't a detail pack. And inside here, if we just take a look, uh, yes, you can see that there is what looks like a three-link coupling or a chain-link coupling or something like that, and also what looks like a vacuum pipe, which is separately painted, and of course, these were eventually fitted with vacuum brakes, which I suppose makes sense. So, yep, sorry about that, there is indeed a detail pack. Anyway, let's take a look at this bill hack then, and the first thing I really noticed when lifting it out of the packaging was the weight. This thing weighs an awful lot, and I reckon there's a lot of die cast work going on here, and I'll talk a bit more about that in just a second. But there is the bill hack. It's quite a bit larger than I was expecting. Obviously, for a snowplow, uh, it is quite a big thing, but uh, yep, as you can see, you can tell already, can't you, that it's going to be a quality model. Uh, but uh, yeah, very, very interesting thing. Uh, something I've never owned before, and certainly I've never even owned the likes of uh, something like this so very very interesting and I'm going to be interested to see how this looks on the track so anyway let's get the other one out then as I said I do have the Stratford Shark so uh, this is going to be the interesting one so exactly the same packaging I suppose I better show you the end of the box so this one is H4B4004 and as you can see just in that text there underneath the diagram you've got the Stratford Shark there in inverted commas and if you still don't know what the Stratford Shark is uh, hang on a second and I will show you exactly Okay, let me grab this. So it's the same drill, obviously, because it's pretty much the same model. And if I just grab this top off as quick as I can, there we go. And I peel back the plastic again, and I'll grab hold of this and show you what I mean by the Stratford Shark. So looking at it from the side here, yep, yeah, pretty standard. But if I show you the plow, you can see that yes, it has the shark face painted onto it, as is what happened, you know, a few decades ago when the crews painted it on there. So there we have it. Then let me grab the other one. My uh, pair of Beal hacks. Really looking forward to getting these tested. But uh, first of all, here's a little bit of background on them, and after that, of course, we'll get them uh, up against the white background, and I'll. I'll show you these uh, in a lot more detail. Okay, let's get to it. So the Bilhack snowplow blades first arrived in the UK during the early 1980s from Germany where they were manufactured. 
However, the blades proved to be far too heavy and a little bit too inconvenient to be mounted onto the buffer beams of several British diesels of the era. And so, to solve this problem, disused bogies from the withdrawn Class 40s and Class 45s were salvaged, modified and repurposed to permanently hold the snowplow blades. This solution proved to be both convenient and cost effective and the units are still in use to this day. And even this year, in fact, the snowplows were invaluable during the bad winter we had. And yet even during better weather in the summer, for example, the plows can still be often seen in operation for testing and maintenance purposes. And interestingly, the bill hack known as the Stratford Shark got its name, obviously, from the large shark face that was painted onto the plow. This was a completely unofficial modification. It was actually made by the staff at the local depot and has since become a bit of a celebrity although unfortunately when they were overhauled uh, that was painted over so sadly it doesn't look like that anymore. So there it is then the Stratford shark up against the white background and just look at that shark face on there. Yeah I don't know why I find that so entertaining. <laughs> I guess I just like the, uh, the thought of a, a giant set of terrifying angry gnashing teeth charging down the line every time it snows but uh, no that is very very cool and obviously it makes the model a lot more entertaining but yes anyway the bill hack here it is up close then and uh, wouldn't you know that it's a class 40 bogey i suppose it's pretty obvious isn't it but yeah what an interesting piece of railway history um, a massive diesel uh, bogey converted into a snowplow so i assume this massive piece up on top must be uh, for weighting purposes obviously the snowplows had to be really really heavy because obviously if they weren't and uh, you know the snowplow crashed into a snow drift or whatever I suppose it would get a little bit unstable possibly even derailing so yes they had to be very sure footed didn't they uh, there's a lot of force of course being acted onto that snow plow and as you can see on the main body of the Beale hack there is a lot of text going on here so you've got snow plow and then ADB I suppose that'll be the running number and then quite interestingly it says not to be hump or loose shunted and as far as I understand it that basically means that these snow plows must always be coupled to a locomotive they're not allowed to move on their own. Uh, hump shunting of course being uh, where you literally place the piece of rolling stock on top of a hill or a hump on the track, let it roll down through points and whatever to be shunted and of course loose shunting is just um, you know pushing things around without locomotives or whatever. I assume that would be something to do with the massive weight of these things of course you don't want such heavy bits of rolling stock being free to roll around on their own and of course the terrifying set of gnashing teeth there is probably not something you want to see coming towards you if you're not expecting it I assume. But anyway lots of printed detail going on there you can see there's plenty of warning signs and uh, sort of high voltage stuff which I assume uh, relates to the power lines which would have gone over most of the rails and to be honest with you to say that it is a snowplow and not a locomotive the amount of detail on this thing is pretty impressive now I don't know too much about these so I'm not going to pretend to know what each and every component on here does but just behind the massive weight here there's all sorts of uh, intricate molded detail going on inside there which is really cool and you've got what looks like some sort of tank just behind the frames there I don't know if, whether that's got something to do with the brakes uh, possibly actually uh, it could be to do with air pressure or something like that uh, because obviously these did have the vacuum brakes and looking at the bogey itself you can see that Hattons have done a fantastic job with all of the detail on here you can see all the suspension springs the axle boxes have been separately painted you've got this uh, little turning wheel here which looks like a really fragile little detail but look you could actually just put pressure on it and it doesn't flex at all which is really really impressive again Hatton's quality here normally that would be free to turn and wobble I've got some mega boxes that have got really loose wheels like this on them but uh, not this one this one's solid as a rock and similarly as you can see the rest of the bogey also has lots of uh, printed detail on it too which is top notch one thing that is a little bit flimsy on this is the ladder if I just uh yeah, you can see this handrail here is a little bit loose. But to be honest, as far as manufacturing goes, I don't suppose they had a lot of choice there because it's not going to be a massively strong piece, is it? You just have to hope that people aren't going to catch it and rip it off. But, you know, it's either have it there or not. So uh, I guess they've done the right thing there and had it there. But it's not too bad. You've just got to be uh, mindful of it and make sure you don't catch it, of course. And the snowplow itself, if you look down on top of it, there's all kinds of uh, support structure on there, which uh, obviously there would need to be because, as I said, a lot of force goes going on to that when they're crashing through several feet of snow. Yep, pretty interesting that. And just around the back, as you can see, we have a NEM coupling fitted, which means that it is very versatile. You can fit basically any coupling you like to it. And of course, very realistic, uh, separately painted buffers, which are sprung. 
There we go. And on quite an expensive little model, that is probably a given. But uh, yeah, that's very nice to see. And obviously, as I mentioned earlier on, the weight of this thing is really quite impressive. And obviously, the reason behind that is because most of it is die cast. In fact, most of this bogey here is made of die cast metal, which is really nice. And if you uh, put your fingers against it or whatever, um, you can definitely tell that. So just like in real life, the model is super heavy because of that die cast. And of course, that's probably why it's a relatively expensive model. But unlike a lot of rolling stock out there, today this isn't just made of plastic there is an awful lot of uh, sort of you know die cast metal going on here which means that it is probably superior to most other types of rolling stock and uh, it's really quite uh, a good quality piece uh, as I say it is solid as a rock and extremely sturdy so there you have it then the highly detailed bill hack really quite an impressive thing and of course this one's all the more impressive with the uh, awesome shark face on the end there so obviously let's get on to performance then not a lot to talk about when it comes to performance but obviously we want to check that this thing uh, can get around the layout okay so let's put this back with the other bill hack then and get them both running so there they are then my bill hacks down onto the track and i've coupled those to two class 20s uh, which i think look quite nice with those and just to give you a sense of the size of the actual plows i've put a little double o gauge person in front of there and as you can see the plow is probably taller than he is uh, so yeah absolutely monstrous things uh, quite incredible the size of them so yeah as I said initially I didn't know too much about these and I wasn't too sure what I should be running them with so I just uh, thought why not ask so I let the uh, the chaps that happens know uh, what sort of diesels and things I've got and they got back to me and let me know exactly what would be suitable so uh, top-notch customer service there really can't fault that uh, okay so let's give this a try then uh, let's just give them a bit of juice Oh no, what a terrible mistake. Whoops, I totally forgot about that bloke on the track. Oh well, at least we know they uh, plough into things okay. Let me just move him out of the way. <laughs> Make sure nothing's derailed. No, it hasn't. And obviously these bill hacks take quite a lot before they do derail, because uh, of course they are so heavy. So let's get these going then, and we'll see how they behave on the rails. Uh, nope, forward you go. I've put the uh, Stratford Shark at the front, of course, just so that, <laughs> just so that it looks cool going over the track. Okay, let me show you what else is going to be running. So I decided I'd just take my pick really on what else to run because obviously I don't have any other snow plows or anything similar. So on the middle line I've got the Helgen. I think this is a class 128, isn't it? Uh, anyway, it's a DMU designed for parcels and things. Um, very, very interesting looking thing. Quite a nice runner too. So there that is, looking pretty good. And then on the inside line I have my Helgen class 26, which is also a nice runner. And she's going to be hauling some passenger coaches today. Uh, some maroon ones so hopefully that will look nice enjoy the running session then and uh, let's take a look at these bill hacks uh, running along the layout shall we so clearly there's not a massive amount to be said for the performance but uh, what I can say is there's no rattling or derailments or anything like that and also the blades have plenty of clearance from the track so there's no snagging or anything and uh, you can even have little inclines and things and not worry about derailments so uh, as far as performance goes uh, yeah can't fault them they, uh, they do the trick I have nudged the Class 20s down in speed a little bit because I suppose they were racing along. I don't expect snowplows should have been going at, what, 60 miles an hour, although I don't know to be sure. But that looks a bit better, I suppose. It's a great look, though, isn't it? Very unusual. And there goes the 128. I hope that is a 128 now. So here are some ratings then for the Hatton's Bill Hacks. First of all, detail. You saw the level of detail on those things, so it's got to be 5 out of 5 there. Yes, highly impressive and highly intricate models. Really quite good. Quality then, 5 out of 5. As I said once again, solid as a rock, as every model I've had from Hatton's has been, so can't fault it there. And value, £42. Does sound a little bit expensive, and compared with sort of cheap plastic rolling stock that you often get these days, I guess that's true. But you have to just remember that these aren't just cheap plastic rolling stock. These are you know, highly detailed die cast models, which really are pretty good value for money in my opinion. So while they are expensive, they're not bad value, so I've given them four out of five there. Obviously power and slow speed are not to be considered with these models, because obviously they're not motorized, so I've just left those blank. Overall then, that is 9.32 out of 10, really quite impressive.
Alright, well, I know this is pretty childish, but it's got to be done, hasn't it? I just felt like an experiment. So, I've placed a simulated snowdrift on the track here, and by the way, this isn't recommended. Uh, it's probably not going to end well, but we'll see how well the ploughs do at uh, scooping debris off the track. Obviously, this is nothing like snow in double O gauge form, so I'm not too sure what's going to happen here, but uh, let's find out. Here it comes. Well, it actually worked pretty well. Uh, let's just make sure the bale hack's back on the track again. Uh, it did derail the bale hack, but uh, actually it wasn't nearly as disruptive as I thought it might be. Let's just reverse back and uh, see if there is any debris left on the track. So I guess I ploughed into it a little bit too fast, but amazingly it has actually cleared the track completely. Look at that. Anyway, let's carry on running them. Yeah, I like these a lot. They're really, really cool, aren't they? Very unusual, and as you know, I like unusual things, so big thumbs up from me, really. So there you have it then folks, hope you enjoyed seeing these bill hacks today for something different, I certainly have. And if you're interested in these, click the link in the description and you can see all of the different versions available from Hattons. But for now, thank you very much for your company, hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, and I will see you all very very soon. Cheers everybody!